into the service. It's really just trying to rank the whole company. And the reports that they give you might not apply to the assets or the threats that you're worried about. I uh, saw, saw this also with mergers and acquisitions of uh, they had a company, they had a contract with company A, company B comes in and buys them and they say, here's the security policy and SOC report for company B. I'm like, well, you're not integrated yet. You know, so I don't care what reports and network tests and stuff you've done. My stuff's over here with this little company and maybe they didn't have as strong a program as the big company that came in and bought them. So I said, you really have to manage your risk based on these scenarios and what the threats are. So that's kind of a long-winded example, but it's a practical example and you'll see that a lot. So I hope that's helpful. All right, this is just kind of the general process. So as I said, we define the assets, threats, and our risks in terms of scenarios. Um, it's a question over there of, of, you know, where do you get your numbers from? We're gonna do estimates with subject matter experts and I've got a list. And then we put the estimates into the software and then it runs a Monte Carlo analysis. Do you know what Monte Carlo analysis is? So it's basically, um, a, it samples between the range, all right? So if you say it's gonna cost us on the low end X and the high end Y, and you're not sure, it's kind of like when they do the weather modeling of where the hurricane is gonna hit, it's gonna go somewhere here. That's really what the Monte Carlo analysis is, is it, it samples between those points and gives you a, a distribution curve, a normal bell curve. All right, let's keep going. All right, all right, so on the loss magnitude side, remember I said there was a loss event frequency, loss magnitude side. There are six forms of loss in FAIR. The first is productivity loss. So that's, everyone's got to stop work because the system's not available anymore. Um, response would be, we've got to call our hot site up and they've got to go activate and uh, we've got to have meetings to manage this incident. So all the time, all the labor rate, you know, times however many hours you're spending meetings, that goes under response time. Replacement is if something blows up, gets ransomware and you've got to replace the whole thing because you couldn't recover from it. Those are replacement costs. F and J is fines and judgment, fines and judgments. So I'll put lawsuits under there too. Um, it could either be a class action or like I said, the FTC could come in. So put numbers around that. Uh, comp adv is competitive advantage. So let's say you've got something proprietary that sets you apart from your competitors and now it's out. You know, now the Coca-Cola for is gone. You know, Mrs. Phil's cookie recipe got out. <laughs> That's what that, and then reputation. Um, reputation, you know, a lot of times people want, just want to run to the stock price and say, that's it, that's all we have to worry about. Well, no, if you have a major breach and your reputation is harmed, you might have to pay your people more to stay or you pay them more to join because they know it's going to be rocky coming up. So whatever that differential is, that might also impact your, uh, your reputation. So there's a lot under reputation that people don't cover. Um, then there's a, there's a minimum, maximum, and a ML is most likely. How we're saying, these are your estimating your, your ranges of, it's not gonna be free, you know, we're not, the minimum fine is $500, or so we're gonna have to at least, uh, at least have one meeting with Bobby, Charlie, and Mo, and Curly, you know, so there's four times whatever our labor rate is, but yeah, you know, it's not gonna be more than a meeting every day. So then you multiply that out and that's how you get your minimum and maximum, right? All right, the confidence level, um, as I said, it's doing some sampling. That's confidence, confidence around your most likely values. So like, I have no idea. <laughs> this is a wild guess. I know it's between X and Y. I have no idea where it's gonna fall in that range. So it'll, it'll sample at a much Broad, you know, broader across the period. Whereas if you're very confident in your most likely value because it's happened before and you've got some good data, you know, you're gonna keep your sampling around that most likely value more concentrated. Okay, let's go to the next. All right, so here's some sources of data. Um, I think it was, it's Doug, Doug Hubbard wrote a book of how to measure anything in information risk 
or, or something like that, how to, how to manage everything in cyber risk. But he says, you have more data than you think you have, and you don't need as much data as you think you need, right? So it, it, you really do have good data. You just have to get the right people involved. You know, collaborate with your business, collaborate with your legal team. How much has this cost us before? Count, collaborate with your finance team. They've got good data to see, you know, how much does this cost if this happens? What, what are our labor rates involved? There's peers you can go to. I can call Jamil Farsky at, uh, he's at Equifax now, but he also was at Home Depot. He knew a lot of the costs. You know, there's industry groups, um, they called the ISACs. So if you're, depending what sector you're in, there's sector groups that can give you data for sharing. And then the Fair Institute has data and there's, there's actually consultants that have more, um, you know, more data they can share. Okay, let's keep going. All right, so outputs. So I gave you the low tech example. This is if you actually had software that you could plug, plug it in. This might be something that you get, right? And this might be a, a, a loss exceedance curve or a loss expectancy curve um, that some of the finance people might have seen before. So again, you're gonna have your ranges of what your costs are and your vulnerability based on what all controls you have in place, people, processes, and technology. And there are free tools and there are also pay tools that can run the curves for you. Okay, keep going. All right, so this is an actual vendor that does um, the, the software uh, called Risk Lens. And this is what samples of their reports look like. Um, now, remember that first slide where we had the executive seeing, so how much risk do we have? What are our top risks? You know, business kind of questions. This is what the curves can look like. Um, if you're trying to fund your security program, this is the one that I like to use here. So basically, oh, we, we don't have money for training, all right? Well, if you train people, it doesn't hit just A. It might hit A, B, E, F, G. So just for having a training program, you can go from uh, whatever funds your IT investment to how much you're going to mitigate risk across the board. It's like a no-brainer. This is the the best way that you can explain to your board why you want to arrest, uh, invest in like a phishing campaign or security training is, is just the, the cost of, of not having it far, far out exceeds the cost of, of uh, leaving it as it is. Um, this, this is an example of the before and after, as, as we said, like with the sticky note removed and without. Um, that might be a way that you can present results to, to justify expense in your security program. Okay, next. All right, um, this is another view of just what a normal distribution curve looks like. As I said, these were like the samples and you can kind of see basically where the line falls. Um, but just kind of keep in mind, risk has two components. It has a vulnerability and a magnitude associated with it. So if I just said, $14 million is, let's say, what we wanted to manage to. Well, is it above our most likely or below? So if you're, if you're saying we want to manage to our 90th percentile, um, you know, not quite there, but I have made the mark if I'm managing to this maturity level, right? So just think about that in terms of two components of you have to know where along the curve you're trying to hit your target. We, we want to manage everything that's less than a you know, a 10% or 5% vulnerability at, at the, uh, you know, $14 million level. Maybe that's what I'm trying to do. Okay, next. All right, so these are some resources for more reading. That's kind of the rest of my presentation. Uh, there is actual certification. This is one that I got this year. Uh, they didn't have last year. It is the Open Fair Foundation certification. Um, you can get the book of knowledge uh, at theopengroup.org and the book, um, is written by Jack Jones and Jack Freund, Measuring and Managing Information Risk. Um, it's actually inducted into kind of like the Cyber Hall of Fame. This is kind of like the Bible now for cyber risk management. Uh, next, um, there is actual online training and you can also get an exam voucher um, if, you, if you want to take the test. If you go to risklens.com, they're the ones that I said made that so the, some of those software um, reports before. Use referral code Atlanta. There's also a free calculator that 
that, like I said, you just go to the tree and you put your numbers into the tree and it'll actually run the curves for you at the Fair Institute website. And there is an Excel workbook calculator that you can get through the open group. Um, again, you just put your numbers into your chart over here and it'll run the curves for you. Okay. All right, so summary. FAIR is becoming the industry standard on qualitative, quantitative risk analysis, focus on loss events. You, you keep whatever framework you have and it layers on with that and assumes risk are comp comprised of factors. We've just defined what they all are. Ranges of probabilities with the financial exposure. All right. Um, we have now, I also started the Atlanta FAIR chapter and our next meeting is Tuesday, October 22nd. Uh, it is free, but you do have to register online at the Fair Institute to register for the meeting. It's going to be at Protivity's offices in Midtown. That's 14th Street and West Peachtree. They will validate parking. We will have food there. <laughs> um, like I said, you don't have to be a technology person, but if you are a advisor to a business and strategy, you want to start understanding quantitative risk analysis. Maybe some of you serve on boards. These are the kind of questions that you want to start asking of dollars. You know, what is the loss exposure? And you might have to help your organizations get on board. Um, I mentioned that I went to the national conference for FAIR uh, last week and I met a woman there who, um, you know, I was asking, you know, tell me about your risk program. Who's on your risk team? How does it fall in the organization? They don't have a risk team. They've got their entire business trained on FAIR so that each business unit knows what their risk is, knows what the controls are that apply to them, knows what the tests are, knows who their threat actors are, and then they go out and they find the data that they want to make their estimates on, and they track their own curves to see how we're doing if they're managing to that level. So that's what I do. And to get there, though, we need you know, the whole rest of the business to join with the security team in helping to manage the risk. And hopefully this will help you. And that's a book again. And that's me. Yes. So do you, do you actually do this for companies to get them started? Yes. So that is, that's part of what I do. You know, like I said, this is a whole, they might need policy work. It kind of depends on what each client needs but this is what I'm trying to train them on of think about their risks in terms of scenarios and get the facilitation together with the business so we can work on the problems together. So let's say in the food industry, because I have my first client was in the HVAC industry. They didn't have a lot of technology, but they, what they did have were a lot of trucks with technicians in them and they issued P cards to them for their gas. Well, Maybe their major risk is abuse of the P card. You know, it's are they going to fill up their personal vehicles with that card? And, how, you know, how do we monitor that? So let's invest money in there and forget the two servers that you have and you're on Office 365 for your email anyway. So there's not a whole lot there we have to worry about. Um, for the restaurant industry, let's say it's food poisoning or let's say, you know, what's the likelihood of somebody suing us? because they got sick off of something that they had in one of our restaurants. Well, what are the factors that go into that? You know, is, our, is there safe food handling inspections? Or do you have a minimum rating for the restaurants to have where they'll pass the inspection? You know, does it cost more to train people or what do you have to do to actually mitigate that problem? And how often does it happen? Do you, have you been sued 10 times in the last, you know, four years or, you know, what is, what are your estimates on there? So like I said, you can apply it to any kind of risk. It doesn't necessarily have to be technology and you're going to treat it the same way of what do we do to lessen the probability of that? Hey, that's it. I know I went long. Oh, okay. Yes.